initiating with premix insulin this is the topic for today and we are going to discuss these things we are going to discuss insulin in indian context we are going to talk about guidelines and evidence based recommendations for initiating initiating insulin and we'll be mainly discussing a lot of practical aspects of insulin initiation so we'll be discussing how practically insulin can be initiated in patients with uh, premix insulin can be initiated in patients with type 2 diabetes now let's straight jump into initiation so for those who are not aware we have an we made an app called the centurion insulin app you can see the uh, it's it's available on the app store and the google play store it's free app it's uh, the main purpose of this app is to help physicians initiate insulin at the right time in patients with type 2 diabetes so that's the purpose of uh, providing this app and you can download this it's freely available it will help you not only uh, you know choose the right insulin uh, but it will also help you initiate at the right time with the right dosage so let's start with the first question about initiating premix insulin and that's when to start insulin so basically obviously a patient with type 1 insulin needs uh, type 1 diabetes needs insulin for sure a patient presenting with diabetic ketoacidosis always needs insulin that's important diabetes in pregnancy often needs insulin right a lot of patients with diabetes require and then you have pancreatic diabetes which is type 3c diabetes often needs insulin perioperative patients require insulin hospitalized patients need insulin so these are the patients who generally require insulin now what about type 2 diabetes patients who require insulin so let's discuss some cases uh, to help you guide you through when to initiate and how to initiate insulin so this is a case of a 30 year old male patient who lives in the us who came to india for a uh, vacation with his family uh, recently had a history of unintentional weight loss polyuria and polydipsia so whenever you have a patient with these symptoms you are thinking of a patient having <coughs> so i'm you're thinking of a patient having uh, insulopenia and uh, so you should you know uh, osmotic symptoms as well so you, you should think of initiating insulin in a patient who has these symptoms he undergoes some evaluation for the same he has a strong family history of diabetes his father was diagnosed to have diabetes at the age of 47 and has a bmi of 27.6 so right at the outset this patient had a uh, very high fasting blood sugar hb1c of 13 creatinine is normal uh you can see ldl and triglycerides are also very high this is typically what you see in a newly diagnosed patient with diabetes however this patient did not have ketosis or ketoacidosis at presentation which is against the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes whenever you have a type 1 diabetes with blood sugar of 400 will surely have ketosis whereas this patient did not have ketosis which was strongly favoring a diagnosis of type 2 rather than type 1 diabetes so we did further investigation nonetheless to really evaluate the situation his usg showed grade 2 fatty liver his gait antibody was negative we did a mixed meal stimulation test where is c peptide uh, both in the fasting and after the uh, you know the mixed meal load the protein mixed meal load was uh, sufficient to suggest that this patient is not having type 1 diabetes so this lab patient was labeled as type 2 diabetes however the patient still required insulin because of the fact that patient had osmotic symptoms and very high hyperglycemia so this patient was having type 2 diabetes with severe hyperglycemia now you can use the app you can input this information in this app and it will tell you whether to start the patient on insulin or not so in this case you can see we are entering the data this is a 25 year old patient hp1c is 13.4 you can see his fasting sugar is 400 his post meal was 361 so you can input this in the in the app and you can see uh, this patient was not on any medication the patient did not have ketosis the patient however had symptoms of hyperglycemia so when you enter this this will ask you for some uh, customary questions which you can enter you know all these things have to be take positive because you have to ensure that you are dealing with the right type of patient who can use this uh, you know for this uh, app right so you enter this data and it will ask you does the patient need insulin you click on that and it tell you that your patient requires insulin right so this is the uh, how the app works right okay So why does this patient need insulin? The patient is having poly polyuria, polydipsia, which are called osmotic symptoms, and these are signs of relative or absolute insulin deficiency. The patient also had unintentional weight loss with an ongoing catabolism, so requires and again, right at the beginning, the patient had an HbA1c of more than 10. This itself is an indication for insulin. Blood glucose of more than 300 is an indication for insulin. So these are all indications why this patient requires insulin, even right at the beginning. 
Now, if you see uh, ADA 2022 guidelines, we have talked about uh, if the patient, you can consider insulin as the first injectable therapy. When you have a patient with ongoing catabolism, where you have weight loss, symptoms of hyperglycemia like polyuria, polydipsia, which this patient had, HPA1C more than 10% right at the beginning, and random sugar of more than 300. All these things you should consider starting the patient right at the beginning with insulin, right? So again, it's a very wrong concept. These patients often are not started on insulin right at the beginning. And in this case, it's very important to initiate insulin in these patients. So you should consider insulin injectable in the first case when you have ongoing catabolism, symptoms of hyperglycemia, when HPUNC is more than 10%, the one when the blood glucose is more than 300 or at the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes is a possibility. So this is based on the ADA 2022 guidelines. So let's look at a second case. So this is a patient where the first case where we looked at why you should insulin, initiate insulin and when you should initiate insulin. And in the second case, we are going to discuss uh, about what insulin to initiate and in, uh, other details of the same. So we are dealing with a 58-year-old patient who is having type 2 diabetes since last 8 years. He had recent worsening of diabetes after COVID-19. He is on 6 mg of glimepiride, voglibose, metformin and DPP-4 inhibitors. His main symptoms are neuropathic symptoms. He has mainly painful diabetic neuropathy. Now look at his blood sugars, his fasting blood sugar is 164, his post meal is 293, his HPNC is 9.1%, his uh, LDL is well controlled, triglyceride is fine, his GPT is a little bit high, uh, TSH is slightly in the subclinical hypothyroid range, vitamin D is less. So again, you can input all this data in the app and the first thing it will tell you is that whether the patient needs insulin or not and then it will also suggest what insulin to initiate. So, you put in all this data. Now this patient is on four oral antidiabetics, so we selected that. Okay, select all these parameters, and it will tell you: Does the patient need insulin? Yes, right. The patient needs insulin. Why? Why does this patient need insulin? We will discuss that in a few minutes, right? So again, this patient it suggests that absolutely that the patient needs insulin, right? Okay, so. Let's discuss why this patient needs insulin, right? So if you look at the RSSDI and ESI, guide, uh, ESI guidelines, this is the 2020 uh, 20 guidelines, right? Uh, these are the situations where they suggested that insulin should be used. Again, we discussed catabolic symptoms, HPA1C more than 9%, fasting more than 200, post meal more than 300. So this patient had HPA1C more than 9%, right? So that becomes an indication. But beyond that, right, again, when do you consider insulin in a patient already on oral antidiabetics? So the guidelines suggest that insulin therapy should be considered in patients failing to achieve glycemic target and remember the target is generally less than 7% on three or more oral antidiabetic agents. In such cases, you should consider initiating insulin, right? So again, this patient was on four oral antidiabetics and the patient's blood sugar was not controlled. Hence, this patient became an indication for starting insulin. Now, which insulin to select as the starting insulin? That's the choice you're going to make. So typically, you can use this formula. You calculate fasting blood sugar divided by HPA1C. That is one formula. If it's more than 20, there is more contribution of fasting blood sugar, in which case you prefer a basal insulin, where if it's less than 20, there is more contribution of post meal sugar, in which case you consider premix or a co-formulation insulin. Right? So this is a formula which we use and the app also uses the same formula and this is a published situation, published formula. So you can use this in your practice to initiate insulin. So let's take a case. So you have a 55 year old female patient, HbA1c is of 10%, a fasting blood sugar is 189, her post lunch sugar is 310. So input all this data in this app again, right? it will suggest that the patient needs insulin. We already discussed such a patient would need insulin, but it will also tell you which insulin to initiate. Right? So Right, so if you click next on this, right, it will calculate, uh, do the calculations for you, you don't have to do any calculation and it will suggest. So in this patient, it is suggested that this patient requires pre-mix or co-formulation insulin and the suggested dose of the insulin is 14 units, right. It will also, you can look at various types of insulin available in India and uh, this will be suggested by you, right. So the second important take-home message we have to discuss, which we, uh, you know, uh, learn today is that the fasting blood sugar divided by HPNC ratio is a very useful test for selecting the type of insulin. If it's less than 20, you can select a pre-mix insulin. When it's more than 20, you can select a basal or co-formulation insulin. Let's discuss another case. Now, this is again a type 2 diabetic patient. His age is 61 years. He is having diabetes since the last 6 years. His HPNC is 9.3%. Uh, if you look at his uh, overall parameters, his glucose, HPNC is 9.3%. Fasting is 170. Post meal is 280. 
uh, and you can see the other parameters. So again, why does this patient need insulin? Remember, he is on uh, multiple oral antidiabetic drugs. We'll see which drugs he is in, and yet his HbA1c is high, uh, and it's not under control. So this patient would require insulin. So he's taking dapagliflozin, sitagliptin, and metformin. He's on three oral antidiabetic drugs with HbA1c of 9.3 percent. In this situation, the patient requires insulin as per the ESI RSSTI guidelines. So again, if you can input this data for this patient in this app, again, it will tell you that this patient needs insulin, right? This app strictly follows the guidelines, so there is no room for any kind of ambiguity, right? And so you click on that, again, it will suggest you that, you know, uh, which insulin to initiate and what dose to initiate, right? So again, based on the formula, if you calculate, right? Okay, okay, I'll show you this, sorry. So based on the formula, if you calculate, right, it comes to, uh, this patient requires premix or co-formulation insulin and it is suggested a dose of 12 units for initiation right so you can see here how smoothly it has selected it is suggested the uh, type of insulin and guidelines so again these are the patients where premix insulin is required right so when do you prefer a premix over basal insulin these are the various categories you can use so i already told you about fpg hpmc ratio if it's less than 20 that is where you consider premix insulin uh, another formula you can use is the uh, postprandial glucose minus fasting plus glucose. So uh, you can use 280. So postprandial glucose in this patient was 280 minus fasting was 170. So it was 110. Uh, and again, uh, in an Indian review, uh, it has been suggested that if this difference is more than 54, you can consider using a premix insulin. Uh, and again, another uh, data you can use is bedtime minus uh, morning glucose. And again, there is no information, but generally, again, if the value is more than 100, you can consider giving up premix insulin so these are uh, various you know uh, guidelines uh, or uh, situations where you should consider giving a premix insulin okay now the question comes what dose of initiate insulin to initiate so again there's a formula to use very simple formula to use so you use fasting blood sugar minus 50 divided by 10 so that's the formula you can use for uh, initiating a uh, premix insulin in your patient with diabetes uh, so again so generally you know and a uh, lot of doctors initiate premix insulin twice a day but my suggestion and again this is what a lot of experts also suggest that you can start premix insulin once a day also so you start with the heaviest meal of the day and start premix insulin once a day and then you can later on add continue to increase it to twice a day i'll tell you how to do that also in the next few slides so let's look at a case so this is a 38 year old male patient strong family history of diabetes with unintentional weight loss random sugar is very high 600 and urine ketones were negative Right, so you can see the uh, pattern here, HbA1c of 13, right, so we use the fasting blood sugar minus 50 divided 10, it's a good formula, so we use the formula and we initiated the insulin for this patient, right, so again, what you do is, use the formula, fix the fasting first, so start the patient on the insulin based on the formula, so if you see here, uh, in this patient, the formula would be, you know, let's say, let's say get 300, so we'll start at about 24 to 25 units of premix insulin, given before the dinner time, right, that is what we started with. So you titrate the dose of insulin to, uh, you know, achieve the target fasting blood sugar. I typically titrate it to achieve a fasting of 90 to 140. It's a very safe level to achieve, right? So uh, this patient does not generally develop. Remember, when you're giving this insulin, there is also risk of nocturnal hypoglycemia. So you have to be careful. So typically, we increase the dose by 2 to 4 units to achieve a target of 90 to 140, right? So again, remember, uh, one pro tip I'll give you. Sometimes uh, when the glucose value comes down, the, uh, the glucotoxicity often uh, is, is re reduces. And if, if the patient is, uh, you know, the blood sugar is already coming down, in such situations, it would be a good idea not to up titrate the dose of insulin further, right? So, I'll give you some examples of titration. So, this patient, you can see, we had started the patient on 22 units of insulin, uh, or some units, I, I you know, we don't know the, but so, fasting blood sugar is 154. So, we increased the dose to 22 units, right? The fasting went to 185. Next day, we increased to 26. It was 175. So, again, the fasting blood sugar is coming down. Right? At the same time, you know, it was still high, so we increased to 180, right? Uh, again, then next day it comes to 156, we maintain. So now from 175, we went to 156, so we maintain the same dose of 28 units, right? Then it went down to 99, we continued the same dose. Then again, it came up to 129, but we are now in the target range, so we are not uptitrating it further. So we kept the dose of 28 units. So this is a good example of how you can titrate the dose of insulin, right? Okay, now once the fasting target is achieved, Right, then you can, uh, when, when should you consider twice a day premix insulin? So again, you once your fasting target is achieved and if the HPNC still remains high, then what you can do is start checking the pre-dinner sugar and you can again uh, add a 
insulin before the breakfast a short uh, the you can you can add the uh, premix insulin before breakfast and again you titrate it based on the pre dinner sugar levels to achieve a pre dinner level of 100 to 150 right so that is a typical way in which you can titrate the dose of insulin right now it's a very important message to fix the fasting first titrate with once a day insulin initially either start with a basal or premix insulin increase it by 2 to 4 units daily to achieve the target fasting of 90 to 140 and if the hbnc is still high you can add a premix insulin before the breakfast time and then you can titrate it based on the same right now there are various studies which have compared the use of premix insulin with glargine which is basal insulin right so you come in this, this is a durable trial where they looked at humaloc mix 25 with glargine they looked at the efficacy of this and they found that humaloc mix 25 has slightly higher efficacy in terms of uh, the hpo1c reduction uh, compared to glargine in fact you know i mean probably uh, just a slight difference but this difference was statistically significant so this is the durable trial again the risk of hypoglycemia was not increased with a modern premix insulin like humaloc mix 25 Right. Remember, this is a short-acting component which is Lispro, uh, which is 25%, uh, and the long-acting component which is NPH, which is 75%. Right. Again, uh, there is a meta-analysis of premix versus basal insulin, which has shown slightly better uh, HbA1c reduction with premix insulin. This is a well-known fact. The only concern with premix insulin is the risk of nocturnal hypoglycemia. However, when you do the titration in a proper way, the risk of nocturnal hypoglycemia is less. So again, if you talk about the earlier case, right, the patient was started on about 10 units of premix insulin, dose was titrated. Again, I probably believe that this is slower titration. So uh, you can probably titrate it more aggressively and then gradually, uh, you know, you can add a second dose of premix insulin before breakfast if the uh, HbA1c target was not achieved. So I thank you for a patient listening and I hope this was useful for you, right? Some important take home messages. So when to initiate insulin if a patient has osmotic symptoms, Ongoing catabolism, HPNC more than 10%, random sugar more than 300. Pregnant patients, uh, patients undergoing surgery, patient with ketosis, if you have HPNC more than 9% with three or more oral antidiabetic drugs, or patient having other organ involvement like CKD or chronic liver disease or perioperative patients, right? Uh, fasting blood sugar divided by HPNC is a good ratio to initiate the type of insulin. Less than 20, select a premix insulin. More than 20, you can select a basal insulin. Fasting blood sugar minus 50 divided by 10 is a good formula for initial insulin doses. And again, when you're using premix insulin, fix the fasting first, titrate one insulin a day, initially basal or premix, increase or reduce the dose by two to four units to achieve a target fasting of 90 to 140. And then if the HPNC is still high, you can then add an additional dose of premix insulin before the breakfast, uh, and then titrate based on the pre-dinner sugars, uh, trying to achieve a pre-dinner sugar of 100 to 150. So I thank you for a patient listening. And the app, like I said, is available freely for uh, use, both on the Android and iOS, right? Thank you.